Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a very special digital to analog converter. Ready? Let's take a look. Okay guys, so today we're going to take a look at my new DAC. Yes, I have purchased this huge behemoth and I must say right from the start it is quite impressive. Okay, so let's start to see a little more about the features. So what is, first of all, what DAC are we talking about? We're talking about the Hollow Audio May DAC, the top of the tops of their production, the flagship. Now, Holo Audio is strictly connected with Kitsune. Holo Audio is a Chinese brand, and the genius behind this these products, they have several products, is Jeff Zhu, who is a brilliant engineer. And he has practically created mainly the, the, the innovations, the circuitry, the, the custom uh, elements of, of especially this type of DAC, which positions it at a higher stage in respect to, to other DACs. So, Holo Audio is very famous also for their Spring DAC, Class A recommended components by Stereophile. So, I mean, they already have, plus many other reviewers, many other critique, positive critiques on their exceptional products. And that is why, as I was in contact with Tim Connor, who is the responsible of Holo Audio USA, and it's following actually, he is one of my subscribers. We were in contact a little bit and he really described me the, uh, the good things of an impressive and amazing things that this DAC is capable of. And that is why, as I called it, I did the leap of faith. I decided to buy it. I must admit that thanks to Tim and also thanks to Manya Hi-Fi, which is a distributor in Europe, I had uh, an excellent special price. But as you know, I am very straightforward and honest with my comments. And in any case, I did purchase it this for me with my money. Okay, it's not a sponsorship. So I will be very frank and I will say the good and the bad of this. In any case, as you have already understood, the, it, it is a positive review. What is the important part here? We are going to take a look at the Kitsune edition because the Maydak comes in three versions, level one, level two and the Kitsune edition. Uh, and Kitsune Hi-Fi is part of Holo Audio. I mean, it's the same thing. But Kitsune Edition is the, the so-called KTE is the top of the tops. I mean, already the May is incredible. That version, the third step, we could say, is the one that has most audiophile grade equipment inside. Besides a little uh, aesthetically gizmos and think cool things on it. But we don't care about that. We do, but not too much. We're focusing on the audio, okay? On the main aspects. And in this video, we're going to take a look in depth to the KTE version. Let's start. Okay, so what kind of DAC are we talking about? As you maybe know, this type is an R2R ladder DAC. So it's something completely different and it's interesting to see how many ladder decks now are coming back because it's an old technology. It's a technology going back all the way to the 70s. So all of a sudden, it's very trendy to do ladder decks opposed to the Delta Sigma simply with the chips that you find in all the rest of the other types of decks, even though there are other kinds as well. But th these are the main two which are very popular now. And the top models now are among uh, audio brands are R2R ladder decks, even though this the, the May DAC is a very distinct and special ladder DAC, not exactly uh, uh, or not completely, we could say an R2R. What is the difference? The difference is I am not an engineer. It's very complicated. I have a list here of, it, of aspects which I'll read you and try to discuss, but it's very complicated and I invite you to take a look if you're interested to their site because it's full of information, very well explained, so it's easy to understand even more uh, in depth and better what I'm, I'm trying to deliver you. So 
what is the main difference? As I said, we do not have a chip, even though it, there is a chip in here, if you want to oversample the signal. We'll come back to this. Instead, if we want to have just a normal, uh, not oversampling, and especially if you want to use the ladder deck inside, what is a ladder deck? A ladder deck is composed by a number of resistors. So it's a discrete type of, uh, of DAC, of digital to analog con conversion where each resistor transforms a binary signal to an analog signal. Very simple. And that happens for every bit. And that's why we have these ladders, these long boards filled up with resistors, because each bit of that frequency sampling rate for DSD and for PCM. We'll come back again also on this aspect, because usually ladder decks are dedicated for, to PCM. So each, uh, each bit is converted on itself. So that's why we have such a difficult and complex machine. It's not just one single chip that, that, that does everything, which obviously it's much less expensive in contrast with ladder DAX, which now you're already understanding why these, this type of DAC is so expensive already here. Plus the May tries to aim at the best of the best in every single component, as we will see. Okay, so let's start to take a look at the main aspects, okay? So first of all, I want to say, I want to claim already that we're talking about an 18 kilo behemoth. Very big. I mean, it has two parts. We will see now why. And the overall weight is 18 kilos. And already there, you're, trying, you're understanding how much stuff is in there. Because usually now modern day DACs, because they use chips and things very miniaturistic, are very small they don't they don't occupy that much space which is something positive i must say in any case here we have something completely different okay let's immediately say the price of this okay we're talking about a five thousand dollar DAC. yes this is high end we're talking about a high end component nevertheless the level one is three thousand eight hundred dollars and the level two is four thousand three hundred so there are distinct prices plus if this is out of your budget you can have something very similar in the end with the uh, hollow audio spring dax which uh, which just released a new version enhanced version respect to the to the old one so there's a little bit of everything for everyone but we wanted to go to the pinnacle of this type of conversion so Let's already see the main specs. So the conversion can take place all the way up to <laughs> get ready to this. Now, native DSD 1024, which it's huge. I mean, there's not even uh, tracks uh, natively recorded at half that rate. Okay, guys, because actual recordings stop at 256. There ain't, there ain't no... 512 when you find 512 dsd they upsampled it okay for now at least so already you're future proofed here from this spec in terms of pcm we're not anymore in the domain of kilohertz we're in the domain of megahertz and we're talking about 1.5 536 megahertz sampling wave whoa baby 1.5 megahertz and they claim that both the DSD and the PCM probably can go all the way double the, that, but they haven't tested it because um, there, there's no way to do that yet. I mean, technology still has to reach that, but they in potential think it, it can, which it's mind blowing, I think. Per 32 bits, which is achievable both through USB and very interesting. Afterwards, we're gonna take a look in the front and at the back, I square S connection okay let's start going a little more in depth now with its more technical characteristics now first of all one thing i loved in this DAC, like any other component i must admit is that this DAC, the may has its own dedicated power supply unit and it's huge and it's filled with muscles and it's filled with quality and it is truly amazing the uh the quality and the power dedicated to 
the power compartment for this stack. It's almost like it's gonna power up, uh, I don't know, a reel-to-reel -reel <laughs> recorder, it's so huge. But we don't have the typical toroidal transformers one would expect, or one toroidal transformer, no. Because in, first of all, we're talking about, about of a dual mono type of power supply. So each channel has its dedicated uh, power supply and each DAC also, as we will see. Even the DACs are split up for each channel, top notch. So we don't have the typical toroidal, we have a different type of transformer which they think is much better. It's not very renowned. It's a dual O type type of transformer which is made up of flat wire, not round wire. And the, the, the wire is made up of six ends, the, the, the purity of copper. That means six zeros after the comma of purity of the copper employed to, re, to do these transformers, which are custom made one by one and handmade. So already here, you're starting to understand the quality behind this machine and obviously why uh, the price is so high okay so i have to read every once in a while sorry guys because there's so many so much information which as you know i am an analog guy but i do like quality and i do need a high quality converter so as i said we're talking apart from the power supply also about a dual mono r2r dac as I said, each channel has its own specific conversion. Okay, it's worth mentioning that there is a common issue tied to all type of R2R DACs. Accuracy. Because when you have all those resistors and, and with that sampling rate, sometimes you do not have a correct, a faithful reproduction. And that is where they had to design a special kind of circuit in order to correct that normal type of deviation that there is, unfortunately, with this type of conversion. So besides the normal ladder DAC, we also have another network of resistors aimed at compensating this inaccuracy. So I will read here now a passage and what, ha what is happening. This extra network of resistors works like trimming but trimming is to change the resistor value. This additional R2R ladder is digitally controlled and will accurately compensate the resistor tolerance, reaching a variance of only 0.00005% tolerance accuracy. Wow. So if this, I'm already mixing you up, this is difficult to follow, don't worry. This just means that the problem of R2R ladders is perfectly corrected and brought back into its tracks. Another important factor, as I mentioned before, is DSD, which is natively converted here. We have a dual resistor ladder network with optimized architecture specifically designed for DSD, which is not an R2R a type of DAC in this case here. It is a, though a ladder network. I mean, we have these resistors. In fact, they claim on the site, Holo Audio is the world's first to support DSD natively on resistor ladder DAC. So far, the only one. This is not the DSD conversion to PCM, something that we all hate before the digital analog converter, but directly by the discrete components of the DSD digital to analog converter. So it is a true resistor ladder resistor DAC acting as a conversion of the DSD signal, not only PCM. And as we have seen, DSD 1024. Whoa, baby. Plus another important integration, which Tim Connor also highly uh, underlined how important this achievement is, uh, which maybe reading all the, the, the different elements you would skip, but this is very important, is their custom PLL, the phase lock loop, that they have imp developed and employed in the MADAC. What is this? This is designated to eliminate virtually completely, I mean, it's so low you can't even notice it, jitter, because jitter still is actually a problem. And with this custom design of their PLL, they have greatly reduced this problem, especially, even Tim was saying this, 
if we use the I square S connection because unfortunately the old SPIDF uh, has the clock signal already incorporated instead and with this with the HDMI cable you have it separate actually on two channels so you have much more precision obviously in that case another important feature much more simple to explain is a very cool high quality aluminium remote control oh yes baby here you have just the basic buttons unfortunately the volume does not work for this model they probably made one for all yeah i mean i know it's not very nice to have two buttons that don't work but i mean the rest do and they're very helpful I, they, they change the display type the input type the mode as we will see there are various modes the output and obviously you can mute it but we will see more in depth after some commands looking at the machine itself and also on the rear let's see now some specs that are strictly connected to the kitsune tuned edition so all copper wire inside the machine is replaced with a 1.5 millimeter pure occ silver wire and already when i read this i said okay if they're using occ silver wire which is extremely extremely expensive to wire inside the damn machine they they're re really thinking on something they really want to achieve something they really want to bring everything to top notch so i was very impressed by this again this is only an akiti model they replaced the eiec inlet connectors with pure silver rhodium plated fasten connectors and the iec inlet again this is only on key te there's also fuse upgrade and this is important a lot of people don't believe in this try for yourself and you see it does have an impact oh boy with world-class red nano fuse with gold silver and graphene and quartz filtering materials very very good quality these are one of the best another interesting aspect of the kitsune tune edition is the st that the standard Vichet caps, which are already very good, are replaced with upgraded KTA capacitors. These are specifically designed by Holo Audio for this machine. I mean, it's not just shelf components picked up who knows where. I mean, every single part here is well thought and decided. Plus, we have the custom made Holo Audio 1000 volts one microfarad caps which replace the already amazing mundorf silver gold caps so in the other levels you do have mundorf evo silver gold caps which are already incredible and here we have something even better plus also the usb model is with this titanus 2.0 circuit which i mean apparently is much more precise and delivering okay so these are where i know it was a lot of specifications and there are much more so if again if you want to check their website i'm going to put a link here below please do it because it is amazing the technology they implemented in this bad baby okay so before closing let's take a look now in depth to the machine let's go okay so let's take a brief look to the rear of the holo audio may and we can see very briefly all the different inputs outputs and gizmos here as we can see we have the input there's also the fuse if you want to change it but we are, as we have seen there's a high quality fuse we have the button to turn it on and turn it off and here below this is the power supply unit which is directly connected here with the dc input and output and obviously there's a dedicated cable here we can see the right and the left output which is also balanced fully balanced circuit as i already said here we have the various inputs we have two coaxial one bnc this is the dc input i said this is the ies which obviously you can connect various types of uh, connections we have two i square s which obviously go via hdmi an excellent usb port and obviously the optical port and that's it okay guys so let's take a look to the holo audio may so we have to turn it on we have to keep the button pressed for a few seconds 
tells us his name, the version of the software there. And now, as you can see, it's already showing 1.5 megahertz because I connected it with the USB directly to my MacBook Pro with Audirvana because obviously you need high quality software in order to play native DSD and other high resolution files. Audirvana is connected to Kobo's, so I can ha have a lot of high resolution tracks in streaming. So first of all, I just want to show you briefly the various buttons. So here obviously is to mute the sound. We have the different display modes in order to turn it off and turn it on. You can also enter a special menu if you click the power button and the menu button at the startup. And you can change, for example, the values of the HDMI cable in order to be fully compatible in other special features connected to the menu. In our case, as you can see, it says NOS up here in the upper right corner. You can change that OS, OS PCM, OS DSD, or as the best I suggest and also they suggest is not oversampling. Here, obviously, you very simply, you select the source. We have the I square S1, 2, Quaxil, Quaxil 2, is that's as PDF, or the ISABU, another feature we will, as we have seen in the prior part where we have the different types of connections. So here we have the optical and the USB. So now it's connected. Let's try to listen to something. Let's try to put a 96 kilohertz track from Telemann. Okay, so now we're going to listen to DSD 256, maximum resolution now in which they're recording an Italian production. Very cool. Gypsy Jazz Trio by Viglione Creni and Gattone, a very cool album, which I highly recommend. Let's listen. Okay, so now we're going to use my oppo and we're going to try to listen to this concerto concerto for, from Edward Grieg, the Super Audio CD and the high resolution Blu-ray format. So we're going to change our source to the I square S1 input and let's start with the Blu-ray. As you can see now, it's locking in and it takes a while. Okay. Okay, very nice. As you know, I'm doing an aerial recording from the my loudspeakers. It's not a direct because it wouldn't make sense. I would be resampling everything and it would be compressed by YouTube. Obviously, it's also compressed like by YouTube also in this case. But it's just better to capture the analog output from the loudspeakers. Okay, so this was the, the Blu-ray. Here we have the same identical recording on 
Super Audio CD. So we can have also a direct comparison. As you can see, it always takes a few seconds. Here we go, DSD64, that's the format of a Super Audio CD. And that's it guys. So let's take a look now on the main pros and cons I think are tied to this, apart from the amazing quality. I mean, in fact, I put number one, the build quality. It all looks and feels high, high quality. Another important factor, excellent pro for me is the NOS slash OS feature. What is that? The no over sampling or if you want over sampling mode you can decide what type what kind of mode you want because nowadays all DACs based on Delta Sigma have an upsampling processing of the signal because it does have it does make sense sometimes I mean you have a higher number of interpolation of, of bits which helps the conversion nevertheless it does create some artifacts in fact they recommend not to turn it on and the, the cool thing is that you can decide although if you, you're, you're using an oversampling you're gonna use an AKM DAC chip inside okay you're not gonna use the, at that point the ladder DAC which doesn't make that much sense but in, in any case even that chip is very very high quality one of the last ones made I checked online so there are four modes you can pick NOS no oversampling at all oversampling respectively in its DSD or in its PCM mode or you can have an oversampling PCM which means obviously PCM but even the DSD is converted to PCM and have that type of oversampling or you can have the fourth and last mode the DSD oversampling which means that DSD and obviously the PCM is converted to DSD, which is something interesting. I mean, a lot of people do enjoy converting their PCM signal to DSD. So you can have fun exploring that. Another important factor that which I, I want to highlight is that we have a true balanced dual mono circuitry inside. I mean, as we will see afterwards, we have balanced outputs. And a lot of times we find these balanced outputs but the circuitry in inside is not balanced. This is something that a lot of people don't tell you. Now, in this case, it is a true balanced dual mono connection. If you want to connect that to, I don't know, uh, your preamplifier, your integrated amplifier, etc., you can have a true balanced connection, which again, I want to highlight this. Not that many machines do implement that, apart from also the dual mono power supply and dual mono DAC circuit conversion top notch an important part I would like to highlight here is that especially finally we're talking about the audio especially the high resolution material is well delivered is amazingly delivered what am I saying that the CD quality if you already have a good DAC, you're probably not going to notice too much difference there are there are obviously I mean you have to have a decent ear and try to know what to look for but I think at least when we're going in the upper difficult part when we're trying to convert high resolution signals when we're trying to convert especially DSD this baby is truly amazing I, I mean with DSD especially I just really had goosebumps what is convincing here is that the music unveils details and the overall resolution that are very good and that is difficult to find at other types of DACs. Obviously, when we're talking about these prices, we're in a very high end segment. So there are 
other decks which do just as good. But we must say that even, for example, in, in Stereophile, which obviously they're seeing much more decks than me, now the May is their new reference. So it's something notable. Plus, what I find here very interesting is that the digital glare, which sometimes inevitably I do hear, is really reduced. Analog is analog, guys. So even Tim Connor said is is a great fan of analog music. And we're all we all agree on that. If you're on this channel, I mean, you know, analog is unbeatable. At least that's what I think. In any case, here that glare. That, I don't know, that shininess, that some, someone calls it coldness, is greatly reduced. And we don't have that congestion also that we find usually with digital conversion. Especially when there's lots of music or complex instruments like a piano or, or things like harpsichord or things like that. So if you're a classical music buff, this is a good piece of equipment for you. Now let's see the cons. First of all, it's huge. I mean, we have, as we will see, two huge metal boxes. I had to clean up one whole shelf and dedicated shelf just for that. But we know we, it's understandable. It's reasonable why. Now, Tim Connor also highly underlined how the May is much more delivering with a Windows operating system. So if you have a Windows computer, it will work better because obviously also because the ASIO driver is just better in in this terms of hi-fi music. I have a Mac and it and it worked perfectly. Obviously you with Macs you have to do a digital over PCM, but that's still the native DSD, no problem. I, I have explained this in depth. If you want to see that video dedicated to DSD, here's a link. So no problem with that, but he did recommend uh, Windows and I think it's a small downside in this sense. Finally, one thing I did not like is the locking sequence. Maybe this will be corrected in the future because obviously there is a software inside and there is a version also that appears when you turn on the machine and they may correct this maybe in the future, I don't know. But when you uh, start your signal, when you start feeding a specific signal, the machine needs 10, sometimes 15 seconds to connect, to lock in and start converting. I don't know why, but it's quite long and this can be annoying sometimes. Nevertheless, sometimes instead when you're already using specific uh, signals and you're switching between them, it goes more fast. I have no idea why. Obviously, there is a huge problem with what? The price. I mean, as we have seen, it is very, very expensive. Nevertheless, as I said in the beginning, we have other solutions. We have this uh, degree of quality and also other models which deliver something very similar. So in the end, what I think at the bottom line is that this price tag is very high and it the sound is very good. And maybe though for five thousand dollars, even though I paid much less, I must admit this, I was expecting a little more. But but we're talking about an incredible machine, obviously. Also because it can do all these things in VSD and PCM. So, as you know, I have introduced a reward system. I think this machine it is well deserves an Anna Dialogue Silver Medal Award, yeah! which is almost the top of the tops. So it's it's a great it's a great uh, medal, and I think in fact this is a great deck. For specific aspects, I would say gold. Plus, I want to say one last thing that, as I mentioned in several videos, my Oppo Audio, which has been modified, something similar, as you think, if you think about it, like the Kitsune Tune Edition, took six months to reach its pinnacle. And it did change after several months. So I'm pretty sure that all this amount of stuff of electronics of wire high quality silver wire is going to take a, a lot of time in order to reach its pinnacle in delivering high the best of its of its capabilities so i'm gonna let's say give it um, at least an, three more months 
I'm already been using this for one month, a little more than one month. So we're still at the beginning, actually. And I'm sure it will get even better. And maybe, maybe I will do another video on, I'll correct this in the video description, who knows, reaching gold, the gold award. I don't know, we'll see. But in any case, we're very, very close. I must admit this. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope it wasn't too long for you. And remember that even if we're talking about digital, music is born analog. Ciao. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.